today I'm going to just talk about um, fintech and, and particularly the self-directed investing part of fintech um, in general. <clears throat> so what is fintech? Well, it's been pretty amazing for us to see when we started talking about doing this at the start of this year, a lot of people that we went and spoke to thought fintech was something to do with surfing. Uh, it, and, and quite seriously, when you said we were doing a fintech accelerator, people would look at you blankly as to what, what fintech meant. Um, you know, now you can't go a day without there being an article in the Fin Review about fintech and, and what's happening in the space. Um, fintech isn't new, so financial services companies have been, uh, you know, using technology for decades now, but, but what's changed is Fintech has moved from mainly back office and middle office solutions. So people who are running fintech, you know, startups and companies, uh, in previous times, uh, their customers were the big end of town. Their customers were the banks, and uh, and this meant that the fintech market was limited to that B two B financial services market, which was in the US fifty five billion dollar market. So it's it's not a small market, but but it's not as exciting as what. Uh, I call fintech 2.0, which is what people are starting to use in the definition of fintech these days, um, which is much more on the um, uh, you know self-directed, direct-to-consumer um, fintech pro uh, products, and, and these are about front office, um, and, and and these rather than having the banks as customers, these startups are really competing with the banks um, uh, and, and, and partnering with them. Um, this is a much more exciting market because in the US it's a 3.2 trillion dollar market and this is why fintech now has started to get so much uh, media attention. So th the question is why has financial services or, or at least this, this uh, front office part of financial services taken so long to be disrupted? Um, you know if you think about you know the internet's been around for 20 years now and, and one thing that, that I think is if you look at uh, the, the progress of, of um, digital disruption since, since the invent of the um, internet, it, it's gone from the less personal, um, less trust necessary businesses uh, and where it's moved through more personal businesses where trust became more of a factor and we're now only just starting to get to, in the last five years and from here on, the businesses where trust is critical for people to use those products. Um, so if you think early on, it was a lot of search, it was a lot of one-way internet. There was no interaction with the internet, you just sought the information there. We went into um, the sort of 2005 to 2010, where you had uh, a, a lot of um, user-generated content, suddenly people were starting to put themselves out there on the internet. Um, and you have businesses like Airbnb where you're actually inviting people into your house who you just met through the internet. You know, it's a big deal to expect someone to come and find a startup and invest a whole lot of money through it. So that's, this is the next um, phase we're getting to. But as people are getting more used to, you know, just slowly getting more used to trusting doing things online, that's, that's where we're progressing. So FinTech you know, is obviously hot right now. It's, it's um, you know, there's been a, a, a really healthy um, growth rate over the last sort of five years or so in FinTech. So, you know, 2008 was only less than a billion dollars of investment in FinTech in that year. Um, last year, there was $3 billion of investment. But the really exciting thing is last month, the month of October alone, there was over a billion dollars of um, venture capital investment in the FinTech space. Now I just want to sort of step somewhere new, which is talk about startup ecosystems. So I think a really important thing for Australia is um, we're not Silicon Valley. So Silicon Valley has grown organically over a long period of time, starting as you know some really successful silicon chip manufacturers that morphed into you know consumer internet software businesses. And and on the left there you can see. Uh, um, the, the five or so, six or so bi biggest businesses on the NASDAQ are all those internet brand names that we all know. If you look at Australia, four of our five biggest businesses on the ASX are all financial services businesses, they're all banks. 
and, and we've got the most profitable banks in the world, and as Max referred to, we've got the third biggest savings pool in the world. So absolutely, if Australia wants to have a startup ecosystem, it should be building it around FinTech, at least as one of the pillars of that startup ecosystem. And that's what we're trying to do at AWI Ventures, we're trying to play a part in that. Um, so the FinTech ecosystem in, in Australia, and in Sydney in particular, has really um, taken off in the last year or so. So, you know, as I talked about, we've got the big established firms, and the real benefit of those big established firms is they're fantastic training grounds for the next generation of startup founders. But they need those people, you know, if you're sitting in a, a well-paid, cushy job in a big bank, you need an ecosystem that makes you feel like it's worth taking a risk and, you know, it's not, it's not a really stupid decision to, to quit that job and go give it a shot. And that's what we're trying to build. So, you know, every level of government in Australia is buying into this. Uh, we've got three fantastic universities right in the centre of Sydney and then we've got a number of other fantastic universities around that. Um, we've got VCs that are specifically focused on fintech, um, reinventure uh, being who just walked in, being the first, and, uh, and, and we're sort of playing at, at the lower, lower end of that scale. Um, and there's also Apex Capital who are playing in that space as well. Uh, we've got uh, co-working spaces, so, so as you may have seen in the Fin Review yesterday, there's a fintech co-working space coming in April next year. Uh, which will be a, a, a real um, centre of gravity for fintech in Sydney. Um, uh, we've got hackathons. There was a the University of New South Wales CBA sponsored hackathon a couple of months ago, which we were involved in running. Um, there was another CBA sponsored hackathon at CBIT a few months before that, um, and they're becoming much more commonplace. Um, events like this, and hopefully there'll be more events like this. Meetups, the Sydney fintech meetup, uh, it drew 130 people to the last meetup, um, which is actually the background of this photo. So that's pretty impressive for a meetup. Um, and then Accelerator. So we're currently the only fintech accelerator, um, but there's also other fantastic accelerators around Australia um, and in Sydney in particular as well. So talking about accelerators, I, I just want to, you know, how many of you know what an accelerator is? Show of hands. So half the room. Um, Accelerators are a, a structured um, process of taking people who have good ideas and helping them get their startup off the ground. Uh, and so that typically involves giving them a small amount of money, uh, a space to work in, and a whole lot of mentoring. Um, and a period of time, you know, three to six months to get to the point that they're then in a position to go and raise some further money to take the business to the next step. Now this was all started by a business called Y Combinator in Silicon Valley, um, which is a general accelerator, it's not FinTech focused. But just to show that accelerators work, they've invested uh, or they've taken in 716 companies in the last um, nine years. Uh, those businesses have a combined market cap of over $30 billion now. Um, they've raised over $3 billion um, in, in, in venture capital, um, and 20 of them are worth more than $100 million. Currently, and there's a whole lot more in the pipeline that are heading in that direction. But late last year, I was looking at Y Combinator and a, a few of the other big accelerators around the world and just counting up how many fintech startups were coming out of them. And there were surprisingly few, certainly a lot less than what you'd expect proportionally. And, and so I sort of scratched my head and thought, I wonder why that is. And came up with this sort of hypothesis, which we've now, we think we've now sort of proven out through running our accelerator, which is fintech has really high barriers to entry for startups. Um, the biggest one being trust. You know, if you're trying to, if you're a new startup, you're a new photo sharing startup or a new um, social media startup, it's not that hard to get someone to give it a shot, see, see what it's like. If they like it, they might keep using it. If they don't, they won't. But if you're a financial services startup trying to convince people to say, invest a whole lot of money through your platform. That's a pretty high barrier to get those people to do that. And so trust becomes a really big issue. Secondly, regulation. Um, you know, for very good reason, there's a lot of regulation around financial services. And one of the big things for startups um, is this, this sort of latest thing is called lean startup. So it's the best way to start a startup is to just get something out there, start getting feedback from customers, improve it, get more feedback, improve it, get more feedback. A really iterative process. 
you can't do that if before you can even put it in the market, you need to have a license. And if when you get the feedback, you might need to change that license, and so you'll need to go back to square one with the license process. So that's another problem for fintech startups. Complexity, you know, by their very nature, the startups we deal with are, are technically complex to build from both a sort of an IT perspective and also from a systems perspective. Um, and lastly, valuation. So fintech businesses, you know, early stage investors are looking for traction. Um, and they're looking for, you know, how many users have you got, uh, how many people are visiting your website. Um, and and that's, that's fine for most early stage internet startups because you can just get your thing up there, you can get people to start using it. For internet businesses, again, because of that regulation point, you might spend the first 12 months without even going live, but you're getting a whole lot of processes and regulation and licenses in place. Now that's traction, but it's not traction in the traditional sense of how a lot of early stage investors look at things. And so that again makes it harder for fintech businesses if that's who they're pitching to. And so with all those theories of why fintechs are hard to get going, we decided to start uh, our fintech accelerator, which is designed to specifically address those things. So, so for starters, we give the startups $100,000 and six months to get their product off the ground. Uh, we give them uh, a, a startup curriculum, which covers the sort of the basics of what they need to know. Most of these people are, are experienced business people, so you know you don't really need to teach them a lot. But there's usually a few, you know, they might they might be really good at finance, but not so good at marketing. So there's, there's things you can teach them. Um, most importantly, we put them in an environment where they're sitting next to each other so that they can all bounce ideas and learn off each other. And then also we build around that a, a mentoring environment where we get experienced people from across the industry um, and also other people who you know, are a few steps ahead of them on the, on the FinTech startup um, path to, to give them uh, constant feedback and, and assistance. Uh, and, and we now coming, this is, you know, today is the end of our first intake and we've, we've just selected our second intake. Um, we think we've, we've shown that, that theory that if you built a, a, an accelerator ecosystem specifically designed for fintech that that would work and it would address those issues of why fintechs don't come out of other accelerators. Uh, and as proof to that, we had 50% more people apply to our second round than the first round. So everything's heading in the right direction. Uh, these are the businesses that AWI Ventures has invested in. Four of them are from the first round of our accelerator, um, being Equitize, MacroView, Simply Wall Street and Debt's 10K. And they're, they're all presenting today. Um, and then three, three others, Stocklight, Stockspot uh, and Selfwealth, are businesses that we've invested in as early stage venture investments, but not as part of our accelerator. They're all presenting today too. I just want to leave you with a quote which I, I found yesterday when I was putting this together, um, which is, uh, you know, it, it reminds me of how my kids now, when they see a rotary telephone, they laugh and they think that's silly. And they can't imagine that we actually made phone calls that way. Or even that we made phone calls with something plugged into the wall. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it made me think this is going to happen. And if you don't think this is going to happen in the next decade at the most, then you're going to be on the wrong side of the disruption. <coughs> so that's, that's me. Uh, any questions?